Welcome to number 4 in the series Model Engineering for Beginners. This video covers the use of back gear and reaming as well as some handy tips for general machining. Here you see me machining a piece of brass bar and this piece of brass bar is too far out of the chuck so to show how flexible it can be I loosened the tool and took a deep cut so watch what happens. You can see the bar jumping up and down as it bends. This is definitely not good practice and definitely not recommended. It was just to show you that the piece of metal looks very strong, but over this length it's very flexible and too flexible for an accurate cut. For the purposes of this instructional video, I will leave the piece of brass sticking out from the chuck a long way and just take light cuts. I initially turned down the piece of brass to half an inch in diameter. I now need to machine the end of it down to three eighths in diameter to fit in a hole in a gas burner that I'm making. This is a gas jet Venturi pipe. After a while, you will get quite close to the finished size by eye and experience. But either way, use the micrometer regularly to check that you haven't gone under size. Initially, it's a good idea to set the micrometer slightly larger than the finished size that you want, so that if you do think you're going under size, you may be lucky and find out that you haven't done. Here I'm taking a cut on the end of the bar which is purposely undersized as you can see here. So now what we have to do is remachine the larger diameter and take a bit more off the half inch diameter to compensate for the piece on the end where the mistake's been made like this. Then carry on with the machining and use the micrometer frequently until you get down to the finished size of 3 eighths of an inch. Then simply machine off the end of the bar that is under the 3 eighths of an inch. After I'd done this I would just simply part off the bar, but I'd like to save the section on parting off for a later video. From a beginner's point of view, simply take the piece of brass out of the chuck and cut it off with a bandsaw or a hacksaw from the main piece of material. Then put it back in the chuck the opposite way around to where it was originally and machine off the messy end where the saw cut has been. Parting off on small machine tools can be a bit of a problem for the beginner. You definitely need to have the correct cutting tool and you need to have a little bit of technique in order to use it. As I mentioned in the previous video, a cut of 90 degrees across the end of a piece of bar makes the edge very sharp indeed. So I always use an old file like this one to remove the sharp edges. As shown in the previous video, use a centre drill in the tailstock chuck to drill a pilot hole in the end of the piece of brass bar. We're then going to drill all the way through this brass bar with a normal twist drill. Always use a centre drill first. Never try a twist drill, it will wander all over the place. Here you see the twist drill in position, drilling the hole through the bar. This twist drill is not long enough to get all the way through the bar. So what you will have to do is remove the piece of work from the chuck, turn it around Refit it in the chuck, re-centre drill and then drill the hole from the other end. Here is the process drilling from the other end. Once again always use a centre drill, the bar has already been faced off and follow through with a twist drill. But do be careful when the drill breaks through into the original hole in the bar in case the drill grabs. If the drill was to break off in the work then the work would be scrap and you would be minus one expensive twist drill. The drill that I used is one imperial size under the size that I want because I need to use a device called a reamer to get the hole to the exact size that I want. A reamer cuts a very accurate clean hole whereas a twist drill doesn't. Reaming needs to take place at a slower speed and the easiest way to achieve this is to go into back gear and back gear slows the lathe down. Back gear can be also used for a variety of functions for turning cast iron or for machining large diameter pieces in the lathe where you need a really slow speed. Feed the reamer in very slowly, nice and easy and very smoothly. If it's a long way in there, you will have to withdraw the reamer. One note here, never reverse the lathe with the reamer in position, otherwise you can damage the flutes of the reamer. In this case I can get through in one. You can feel when the reamer is binding with the chippings and it wasn't here so I just went through in one go. Nice and easy, nice and smoothly and steadily. And if you do this right, you will get a very accurate hole in the work. It's a good idea to build up a collection of reamers 
I work in imperial sizes usually, and reamers are used for axle boxes and bearing surfaces in general. I have most reamers from 1 8 up to around 1 inch. If you do have to withdraw the reamer, use an old paintbrush to remove the swarf, then you can go through once again. Slowly of course. Once the reamed hole is complete, your component will fit very well. Here are some examples of plane turning. This is the Venturi that I've just described. An extension handle for a hand pump. This is a Stuart Turner water pump. One word of warning, all this nice coloured swarf that comes off the work, do not ever touch it, because it's very sharp and it will stick in your fingers like you wouldn't believe. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.